Today we're going to take a look at quadratic type equations. Um, what this means is that these are, going to, these are going to be equations that may or may not start out looking like quadratics, but somewhere in the midst of solving them, we're going to solve quadratic equations. That's what it means, okay? So um, our first one that we're going to take a look at is something that has come up before, um, and you guys are still really struggling with this question. Um, it's, it's not a, a difficult question, but I think maybe you're just not knowing what the, what the language means. It asks you about excluded values. And excluded values means values that you cannot use. Um, in particular, when we're dealing with fractions, which is what this is, I cannot have my denominator equal to what? Zero. So if I'm going to exclude a value, it would be a value that would make my denominator equal to zero. That doesn't mean it's the number zero. It could be but it didn't have to be. So in particular, what I want to know is I want to know where does this denominator equal zero? That location is an excluded value. So maybe it's a w equals two, or maybe it's a w equals five. But the way that we find it is simply by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving. And that denominator is, in fact, a quadratic. The numerator has nothing to do with it, by the way. Some of you get overzealous and you just want to set everything equal to zero and solve lots of stuff. The numerator has nothing to do with excluded values, okay? It's just the denominator. So, of course, we like values that factor, and this one does. So, how will this factor? Okay, good. Both negatives, you bet because the middle term and the last term, and they're threes, you bet. And they happen to match. If they didn't, we would have set both of them equal to zero. But these happen to match, so I only need to set one of them equal to zero. And what, in fact, does W equal? Three. So this is the excluded value. I cannot allow three to be part of the values that work here because I would get a zero in the denominator. Make sense? Okay. Now, the rest of my questions are going to say solve. This one said find excluded values, but it really just means solving when the denominator equals zero. The rest of them are actually solving equations. See, this was not an equation, right? What's missing for this being an equation? An equal sign, yeah. It doesn't equal anything, it's just an expression. The rest of them we're working with are equations. And we've seen problems kind of like these before, but they weren't quite so complicated, all right? Now, one of the things that we've seen looking like this had problems where we were simply adding and subtracting and combining like terms and simplifying fractions, okay? But now we're going to be doing that in the context of solving equations. So, as we take a look at this problem, we need to figure out what my denominators actually are in factored form. And the second one and the third one are already sort of as simple as they get, right? Nothing to do there. However, the first one can, in fact, be factored. So, how would I factor this first denominator? Y and Y, uh-huh, what's next? Minus five and minus three happens to be the other two denominators that are already on the other side, aren't they? Okay. Now, when we did this with fractions that were just numbers before, one of the things we said is, man, I'd really like to get rid of the fractions, right? We did. That's exactly what we're going to do here as well. And we get rid of fractions by multiplying by the denominators. So here's what that looks like here. We're doing it very carefully so that we don't get messed up in the process. I'm going to rewrite what I have. And on every fraction, I'm going to multiply by y minus 5, y minus 3 on each piece of my equation. So here is 1 over y minus 3. I'm multiplying by y minus 5, y minus 3. And then I have 2 over y minus 5, and I'm multiplying by y minus 5, y minus 3. 
And of course, the reason that we did that is because in every situation, the denominator will cancel out. So since I'm still on the right-hand side of my equation, you'll notice that the y minus fives cancel out. I've canceled it. The screen doesn't want to show it to you. In the middle, what cancels out? Y minus three. The y minus threes. Okay, and then on the left-hand side of my equation, of course, the entire y minus five and y minus three denominator reduces. So on the left-hand side, what am I left with? Seven. Seven. On the right-hand side, but in the middle, what am I left with? Yeah, so technically there's a 1 times y minus 5. The only reason I'm going to write that is just because I want you to make sure that you don't forget this little 2 right over here, right? He's still there, too. So on the second one, I have 2 times y minus 3, right? Okay. Doesn't that look a lot better? A whole lot better. In fact, it looks linear. So we're going to actually see what we get now when we clean things up. So there's the y minus 5 plus 2y minus 6. What do I get if I simplify the right-hand side? 3y minus 11. And then what? Add 11. So now I have 3y and 18. Divide by 3. So what does y equal? 6. Now, on this one, it is 6. But on every problem you do, you need to make sure that the answer you get in the end does not make the original denominators equal to 0. 6 won't do that, right? If I plug 6 into, hang on, into y minus 3, I get 3. And if I plug 6 into y minus 5, I get 1. So I'm good to go. And this is the left-hand side, just a combination of those two things, okay? So I want to make sure that I don't actually try to say that the answer is actually an excluded value. So I have to check that with these. All right, let's try another one. This one's a little uh, cleaner to work with but the result in the end makes it harder to get the answer. So, as you look at this one, you don't have to factor any denominators. It's already nice and neat. And the only denominator is what? You. It's you. So, on this problem over here, when I found out what my denominators all were, I multiplied by them, right? I'm going to do the same thing here. I just only have the denominator you. So every term is going to be multiplied by u. 24 over u times u. Negative 6 times u. And 3 over u times u. So I've multiplied by u to all four terms. OK, so what will I have on the left? u squared and then negative 24. Good. How about the right? And 3. Good. Because the whole point was that the u's that are in the denominator will cancel with the u I'm multiplying by, right? That's what I'm going, I mean, that's the whole goal, really, at that stage of the, of the process. Okay, here's why this problem um, is maybe, say, harder than the last problem, is that I actually don't have a linear function at this point, right? There's not a linear equation. It's, it's quadratic, right? And we've been working with quadratics now for several, several class periods. When we get to the point where we have a quadratic, we have to put everything on the same side, correct? Okay, so I can move my 6u, so I'll have to add 6u. And I have to subtract 3. So the left hand or the right hand side is 0. The left hand side is u squared plus 6u. Those are pieces that don't combine. 
And then I have negative 24 and negative 3, which is, yeah, negative 27. Basic rule of thumb, we get to the point where we try to factor. Most of them will. And what would we get? We'll get u minus on both of them. And then what were they? Oh, sorry, 1 is what I meant to say. Yep. And then what were my numbers? Yeah, I need 9 and 3. It's actually going to be a positive 9 here and a 3 here, but when we solve, the signs will switch, which might have been what you were thinking. Yeah, so I need positive 9, I need negative 3. That's how I get a positive 6 in the middle. Okay, right? So this is negative 3, positive 9, gives me a positive 6. Okay, so this is an example of one now where I have two answers and each of them gets set equal to zero to solve. So what does u equal? Positive three and negative nine, and will either one of those make any denominator zero? No. Um, the only denominators here we have are just u. The only thing that would make that zero be zero itself. So we're good to go with both of these being legit answers. Any questions on that one? Okay, my next example is sort of a combination of the last two. Um, it will end in quadratic form, um, but it has more pieces to the denominator. It looks like this. This one's very nicely already factored for you. Some of them you work with will be, and some of them won't. Um, and you'll notice that the denominator on the left matches one of the pieces of the denominator on the right, and that will almost always happen as you're working through these problems. There should be some matching going on, okay? So I wanna get rid of all the denominators, so what do I need to multiply every term by? U plus two, U plus three. So I'm going to multiply 4 times u plus 2, u plus 3. And then I have 3 over u plus 3 times u plus 2, u plus 3 equals negative 3 over u plus 2, u plus 3 times u plus 2, u plus 3. So on the right-hand side, the entire denominator cancels with the u2, u3, u plus 2, u plus 3. In the middle, I have a u plus 3 canceling. And at the beginning, there's no canceling. We just have to multiply it out. So you can multiply the 4 through first if you want. Um, but I think it's easier to multiply this piece out first, the two binomials together, and then the 4 last keeps my numbers smaller longer. Smaller numbers are usually easier to deal with. So if I were to multiply out u plus 2, u plus 3, and combine like terms, what will I get? u squared plus 5u plus 6. Okay, we'll continue that piece in a moment. In the middle, I would multiply my 3, 3, so I have 3u plus 6. And what will I have on the right? Yep, negative 3. Okay, now we can multiply the 4 through. So I have 4u squared plus 20u. Told you the numbers were going to get a little bigger. Plus 24. Plus 3u. Plus 6. And is it okay with everyone if I go ahead in this same step and add the 3 to? Are you guys going to be all right with that? Try not to do too many things in one step because I really don't want to confuse the issue, but are we all right with that one? Okay, combine all your like terms on the left. You should end up with a u squared term, a u term, and a constant term.
I'll start us off. Four, four u squared. How many u's do I have? Which I'll get. 23? Uh-huh. 23 u's. And then what are my constant, what is my constant value at the end? 33. Good. Um, I don't know about you, but that's not especially simple to factor. Um, the 33 at the end could be 33 and 1 or 3 and 11. The 4 at the beginning could be 1 and 4 or it could be 2 and 2. The one thing we do have going for us is it's all positive signs. So I know my signs. So let's start there. Plus, plus. And we're just going to try something. Okay, so somebody pick something you want me to try. You want me to try for you and you or to you and to you? To you and to you. Okay, do we want to try 33 and 1 or 3 and 11? 3 and 11. Okay, so let's check. We're check we know that we're going to get the beginning and the end. That was, there's no question on that. The question is whether we get the 23 in the middle. So on the inside, I have 6 u. And on the outside, I have 22 u. Will that give me the 23 I need in the middle? No. And switching the 11 and the 3 does not help, right? So I know that 11 and 3 are not the right choice here with the 2 and the 2. So let's adjust those and switch it to 1 and 33 and see if that helps. Is that going to help? No, it's bigger than it was before, right? Yeah. So I think that we really don't want the 2s. I think we need to change those and make them a 4 and a 1. So let's try 4 here and 1 here. Oh, that's way too big. I have 4 times 33. That's not going to work. How about a 4 here and a 1 here? That's still too big, right? The 33 is too big. So what's the last thing to try? Yeah, an 11 and a 3. Megan, where would you like to put the 11? Okay. So in the middle, I now have 12u. And on the outside, I have 11u. Will that give me 23? It will. Okay. So this is one that the trial and error just simply took a while because we had quite a few choices to check. Um, and sometimes you guess right and sometimes you don't. So we're going to set each value then equal or each factor equal to 0. So I have u plus 3 equals 0 and 4u plus 11 equals 0. On the first one, what does u equal? Negative 3. On the second one, what does u equal? Yep, we're going to subtract the 11 and then divide by 4. We have a negative 11 over 4. Are these both solutions to my problem? What's wrong, Sarah? Well, we can't have negative 11 over 4 and a subtraction. You actually can. That's not a problem. The well, like, okay, Keely, what's wrong with the negative 3? If you were equal to negative 3, I would end up with zeros in denominators. So this is not a solution. We have, I called it this before, it's actually called an extraneous solution. It means it comes about by the algebra we work through it with, but it doesn't really work in our equation originally given. Um, the 11 over 4 may not be friendly, we may not like it, but it's actually a solution that's valid. Okay, so we have one solution, it's u equals negative 11 fourths. Uh, and if you want to, you could write that as a decimal. That one would be okay. Um, it would be, what, negative 2.75 or something like that. It would be a terminating decimal, so if you prefer the decimal value, you could do that. Okay. It's a messy one, right? On lots of counts. Let's try another one. Okay, so on this one, I have two denominators. And they are completely unrelated. That is to say, they don't have pieces that match, right? Factors. They have the u, and they have a 2 in them, but they're not the same u, u and 2 combination. It's u minus 2 and u plus 2. 
So if I'm going to try to eliminate both of them, what would I have to multiply by? Yeah, I'd have to multiply by both of them. So I've got u minus 6 over u minus 2, and I'm going to multiply by u minus 2, u plus 2. And this equals u plus 4 over u plus 2 times u minus 2, u plus 2. And then I have plus 1 times u minus 2, u plus 2. And some of these cancel out, right? So the first one is the u minus 2's, those cancel. So I'm left with u minus 6 times u plus 2. We'll do that in a minute. What cancels in the middle term of the 3? The u plus 2, right? So I'm left with u plus 4 from the numerator and u minus 2 from the other piece that I did not actually cancel. And then I have u minus 2 times u plus 2 um, times 1. The 1 doesn't really affect anything. Um, what do you get if you if you multiplied this one out? Distribute. u squared should be minus 4. It's a difference of squares. You got a minus 2 and a positive 2, so they give you 0 in the middle. All right, if I distribute out the one that's on the left, I have u squared, and then what? Distribute and combine. Uh, yeah, there's a negative 6 and a positive 2. It's negative 4u in the middle, right? And then I have negative 6 times 2 at the end for a negative 12. Uh, I have a u squared in the next one. And if I do the inner and the outer terms, what do I get? Mm-hmm. 2u and then minus 8 plus u squared minus 4. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we've combined everything that we can. Let's combine the things we can on the right. What do I have on the right? All right, 2u squared it is. And 2u. What are my constants? It's minus 12. All right, do you want to move everything to the left or onto the right? To the right? Okay, so if we're moving everything to the right, that means I need to do minus u squared to both sides. I can do plus 4u to both sides, and I could do plus 12 to both sides. And on the left, I have 0. What will I have on the right? u squared plus 6u. It's a binomial, right? It just has two pieces, not three. So I don't need to do two sets parentheses. All I can do at this point is look for a common factor. What is common to both pieces? A u. And if I factor it out, I have u plus 6. So u equals 0, and u plus 6 equals 0. So u equals 0, and u equals negative 6. Looking back at the original problem, do either of those make the denominator zero? Nope, they're both good. So these are both solutions to my equation. Okay, the last two problems are different. 
all those problems so far have started out as rational equations that have simplified in the end to either linear or quadratics and we solved them and we always check them back with the original one. The last two are, are really very different than this, but they still have this quadratic form. Here's the first one. Write it down first. have a highlighter or color with you, grab it, and it will help you to see what I'm going to do if you put it in colors. Um, the parts that are currently inside parentheses, highlight or color them with a color, okay? What I want you to see first is that what you've highlighted is the same and it's in multiple places. Do you see that? Currently it says x squared minus 5. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to pretend like the parts that you highlighted didn't say x squared minus 5. They just said y or u or r or k. Just give it a different name, all right? And I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm going to call mine u. So now where I've got the yellow, every yellow spot's going to be replaced by the letter u. So I've got u squared plus 2u plus 1 equals 0. So what I've basically said is that this yellow thing that I have, which is x squared minus 5, I've renamed it as u. It's just renamed. And the reason I wanted to do that is because, take a look, u squared plus 2u plus 1 equals 0. Is that easier to work with? Oh my goodness, yes. Way easier to work with. In fact, it's factorable. How does it factor? Yeah, don't overthink it. It's u plus 1, u plus 1. And I can actually solve that, right? It's actually identical in both pieces, so I only need to solve one of them. What will u equal? It's negative 1. That's amazing, except that the original problem wasn't u. It was in terms of x, but you know what u is. What is u? Well, it is negative 1, but what is it in terms of x? It's x squared minus 5. So at the end, I will put the x squared minus 5 back in, in place of u, and I will finish solving now for x. So what I've done is I've made a change to make the problem easier to work with, and then in the end, I have to change back. So we'll add a 5. x squared equals what? 4. And then what? Take the square root. So what will x equal? Ah, somebody got my plus or minus. I wasn't sure if I heard it the first time. Yeah, I put the square root on, so it's plus or minus 2, right? I don't actually have to worry about going back and making sure this makes no denominator equal zero. Why? There are no denominators. Yeah. There are no denominators on this one. So the problem ends up being two solutions. Okay, I have one more example similar in nature to this. Does everybody have this one all written down? Okay, try this one. This one is less obvious than the last one, and that it can be treated this way. First issue, everything's got to be on the same side. Everybody good with that one? Now, it's not a quadratic, because I have a power 4 here, right? I mean, like, it, it isn't a quadratic. But it kind of feels like one, right? I have a power of 4 and a power of 2, and then I have a constant. Instead of having a power of 2, a power of 1, and a constant. Feels very much the same. 
In fact, if I were to isolate this and write it like this, it would actually look a lot like the last problem. I do have something squared. I do have that same something in the middle and I do have a constant on the end. And in fact, I'll highlight again too, this piece right here is exactly what I want to change the name of. I don't want to use y squared. I want to give it a different name. Apparently I'm in the habit of calling it u, so I'll use u again, but you can use whatever letter you'd like. And so I want to replace my highlighted yellow pieces with u. So in fact, I do have u squared minus 6u plus 5. And now it really is in the form of a quadratic that I can factor. How will this factor? Good, u minus 1, u minus 5. If, if factoring is still a real struggle, now is the time to address it. Please do not wait any longer to come see me or to talk with someone about how we're getting these factors to happen because it's not going away, right? Each of these can now set, be set equal to zero. All right, so what will u equal, u itself? One and five. But I don't have a u in my original problem. What do I have? I have y squared. So I need to do a replacement now of the variable again to be back into the term of y squared. So how will I now solve for y? Square roots. And when I square root, what has to happen? We have to use a plus or a minus. So in the first one, what is the square root of 1? It's 1. So this is y equals plus or minus 1. On the second one, when I square root, I still have the plus or minus, but what's the square root of 5? It's just the square root of 5, right? We don't, we don't have a, a closed form for it other than that. So we end up with four solutions on this one. I could never end up with five solutions on this one. Do you know why four is the most I could have? because it's the highest power. The highest power tells the limit on the number of solutions possible. Y to the fourth means that the most I can have four solutions, which I do have four in this one.